Hello guys, welcome back to a new video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a cool new thumbnail like this. Uh, I've done a past tutorial on how to make a thumbnail like this, so this is kind of going for a different style. But uh, a link to to this tutorial will be in the description and it should be in the in the corner of the screen. I think it's like a little eye in the corner and yeah, it'll be there. And uh, yeah, so you can just click on that and then you'll be directed to this tutorial. Yeah, in this, in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to make this kind of um, design. They're kind of very different in styles. This is a thumbnail that I used for my new series I started the other day. So if you haven't seen that, go check that out. It's, it's pretty funny. And uh, yeah, so you go check that out if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, the, we're going to be using two stocks from uh, packs today. And these are from rated 70,000 subscriber packs. So you guys can go download that. Uh, the link to his video will be in the description where you can. And uh, yes, yeah, so you can just go download that then. And uh, yeah, so these are the stocks we're going to be using. And let's get into it. So what you're going to do is you're going to get a file start, just of course like you usually do. The dimensions are going to be 1280 by 720. You could just do 1920 by 1080. Uh, I mean, um, yeah, those. Are, but you could just use these instead. They are the same uh, aspect ratio, but it's just downsized, just so it's a lot easier to work with. The, the file size is a lot smaller. And uh, yeah, 1920 by 1080 just really isn't necessary for thumbnails. And uh, yeah, okay, so now we've got our white background. We're going to make our foreground color black and just press Alt and then Backspace. And it basically just fills um, fills the layer with black or our foreground color. And uh, yeah, so we're going to start off with a black background. We're going to make a new layer and then we're actually going to add a light source. So just go to our, just make a new layer just like that. And then go to our brush by pressing B on our keyboard. And just going to right click and then we're going to, we're going to go for this default brush right here. And uh, we're going to be using our square bracket keys to change the size. So you can see I can actually just change the size of the brush by using my square bracket keys. And then we zoom out a little. And okay, so we're going to change our foreground color to a white. And then we're just going to click at the top just so we can get this nice big light source. And uh, yeah, okay, I think that's good. And um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to blur the, the light that we have just so it spans over the whole thumbnail, almost of it at least. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. And uh, yeah, now we can just increase this until we find an amount that we want. Um, okay, I think that's good. So just press enter, and now we can just decrease the opacity of that. And okay, that's good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use this stock first. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click, drag it in, and uh, yeah, it's going to input like that. Make sure it's the right size. Uh, so you just want to resize it just so it fills up the whole canvas and you also want to make sure it's below your light so what I might want to do is I might just want to click there just type light uh, just so it's just so I know what layer that is and then I'm well now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our stock that we just imported and go to filter blur and then Gaussian blur and we're not going to blur it too much we'll blur it um, I think that'd be good I think that looks good like that and then we're just going to decrease the opacity of it and okay and now we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our other stock just click drag this in as well and we're just gonna make sure it's the right size like I said before um, all these stocks will be big enough for 1920 by 1080 and that's why we need to make them smaller just because we're using smaller dimensions and uh, yeah so now we're gonna do is we're gonna go to blur blur I mean filter blur Gaussian blur again just like that um, we'll blur it. okay that's a good amount and then we can just set this to overlay and uh, there we go I think it's looking pretty cool so far and um, yeah so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a brightness and contrast color correction if you don't have this adjustments tab up here open all you need to do is go to window and adjustments and then this will open and then I'm just going to increase the brightness and uh, I don't know we might just just fiddle around with contrast see what looks best uh, but for now I think that'll be good and I think I'm going to lower the opacity of this texture because I think it's looking a bit too grungy right now. And uh, yeah, we don't really want that. Okay, so it's looking cool. Uh, it's looking good so far. Now we're going to add like the giant contrasting colors. You can see that it's a very colorful banner. And um, yeah, so what to do that, what we need to do is go to this icon down here and go to gradient. And then we can just pick whatever colors we want. So if we wanted, we can go for this. And but what we need to do, make well, we, um, what we do need to make sure we do is change the angle. So yeah, I think that'd be good. And we can just click and then drag how our gradient around just to position it in the way we want. And then I'll just change the blending option to color. And as you can see, it completely colors the whole banner. 
But um, yeah, so you can mess around with the colours. I think I'm going to go for uh, the same colour. Actually, no, we could go for a bit of a red. Alright, that looks cool. And then, um, yeah, yeah, I think it's looking a bit too harsh at the moment. So we might fade it into like a yellow. That could look kind of cool. Uh, just press OK there, and we can just drag it around. And then if we wanted to, we could just lower the opacity. And uh, yeah, so you can see we can make we can, there are endless possibilities of the colours, and uh, it looks really nice. So you can see that we've already done most of our banner, and we really haven't actually done a lot to it. We got here really fast, and it's already looking really really cool. And uh, now, you, but now we're gonna add is these lines that you can see in the background. I use them in my actual branding for my videos. I can like um, in the video overlay, you'll see that I use it there. And uh, yeah, I think it looks really cool. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna press B on our keyboard to open our brush. And uh, we're going to right click and then change the size to probably about 2 or 3. Uh, we'll go for 3 and then the hardness must be 0. And then uh, we're going to go to our pen tool. And then we just literally just draw lines over the whole banner until we get... We don't really want parallel lines. You see what I'll show you what I mean by parallel lines. So if I just did that and then press stroke path and then um, make sure this is brush. Press OK. You can see that the parallel lines don't really look that good. So that's why I kind of like to mix it up and just just go a bit crazy with it, really. Um, uh, okay, I think that'd be good. So once we've figured out our path, literally just random lines, but make sure that none of them are parallel. Well, obviously, it doesn't really matter if some of them are, but um, you don't want it to be too noticeable. So once you've done that, I'm going to right click, go to stroke path, and make sure there's some brush. And then uh, you can stimulate pressure, although you don't really need to. Uh, what stimulate pressure does is it makes it fade and fade out the edges of the I mean the ends of the paths and yeah you don't really need to do that on this um, specific view so just press OK and then press enter on our keyboard and now what we're going to do is going to change our the blending overlay I mean the blending option of these lines to overlay and uh, you can see that they make these really cool light effect and uh, I in my opinion they look really nice um, you don't have to use them if you don't need if you don't want to uh, yeah, well, so what I do now is I press E on my keyboard to get the eraser tool and I just kind of go over uh, Some of the lines you can decrease the opacity if you wanted to um, I just kind of go over them just so they're just so they're not too plain and boring uh, if that kind of makes sense and uh, Yeah, so we've already got our lines. We've got our effects I, and um, Yeah, so it's looking pretty cool so far and uh, Yeah, with these lines I kind of like to make them fade out at the ends uh, just so it kind of yeah, I think it just looks better that way. I'm not sure why I might have actually just erased too much I might just uh, undo a bit and Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the ed the ends of the or the edges of this kind of the canvas black Just so it kind of focuses on the main point in the middle So to do that we're gonna go to this icon again down here then go to gradient and then we're gonna change this drop down menu to radial and then we're going to change this white to a black and then we're going to change this white to a black as well okay and press okay there as well and then now we're going to check reverse and now you can see that we've basically made a focus point in the middle and um now what we can do is we can just scale it just so it only affects the edges and um yeah so like i said before it kind of makes puts all the focus in the middle and uh, it looks really cool like that and once you've done that, just press OK. We can set it to overlay. Or oh, that actually didn't really make much of a difference because just lower the opacity down. And uh, yeah, so now it looks pretty pretty cool in my opinion. And uh, now for our last um, color correction. To, uh, so we're going to go to exposure, which is right here. And I kind of like to increase the offset a bit. So I don't. I probably wouldn't increase it too much. Maybe about... Um, maybe add a 2 there. Actually, it's still a bit too much. Maybe a 1. Actually, that's still too much. Uh, so we might just four. Yeah, okay, that looks kind of cool. So you can see, I just set my offset to 0 0.0020. I don't know why it's so sensitive, uh, because I'm never actually ever going to use this, like this much offset. So why? I don't know why they've done that. But, um, yeah, so we're just going to use uh, 0 0.0020 as our offset, and then we can increase our gamma a bit. And then uh, I don't think we need to change the exposure, although we might want to a little bit. Um, okay, that's cool. And uh, yeah, so now we've done that, then now we're going to add our text. So you just want to click below your light. So you want to click on the layer that's below your light, just so that when we make the text tool, it'll go just below your light. And that's exactly where we want it. 
So we're, we're going to just put text for this tutorial. So and if you can press com uh, hold command to just drag it out, uh, drag it out using shift, just so it doesn't resize like this. And uh, yeah, so we get the right sizing. And we can use our purple line or pink lines to snap it to the middle of our canvas. Uh, if you're on a version that's lower, then I think uh, the purple, the pink lines are only in Photoshop CC. So if you don't have Photoshop CC, what you need to do is unlock this bottom layer just by clicking on the lock, then press Command T, and then you can just drag your rulers in, and then uh, that will show you your center point just like that. And uh, yeah, so once you've done that, we're going to actually style our text. So now uh, to do that, we're gonna press T on our keyboard and we're gonna change the color of our text. So we're just gonna go for an orange, just like that. It looks kind of cool um, if you kind of blend it in with the colors that you already have. So, and to, an easier way of doing that is by setting the blending option to overlay. And yeah, it kind of just uses whatever's in the background in the front. You can see that the lines run through. You kind of see the texture in the middle as well, but I'm not gonna do that. And so yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna double click on our text, go to gradient and then uh, we're gonna use a default gradient, so just gonna put reset to default, and uh, we're just gonna use this one right here. So once you've done that, just press OK, set the blend mode to multiply, and then we're just gonna lower the opacity of that, and we can set a drop shadow as well, just so it's a little easier to see. And we can increase the size. You guys can just copy down these digits. Um, yeah, you can just pause the video and just copy them down. And then uh, no, we're not gonna add it. Actually, we might add a satin a bit later. But now we're gonna add an inner glow. And we're going to increase the size just a little. Um, just find out, just mess around with it, see what looks best. And then, yeah, now we might add a satin. To make sure that this is on overlay, make sure this is white. And make sure the contour is on this like mountain in the middle. And then, um, yeah, you can just mess around. Uh, I think that looks pretty cool. And yeah, so now if we ever wanted to change the text, we just press T on our keyboard. And then I can just put like, episode one and then I can just highlight the bottom text and then just uh, drag on the text here to make just this word smaller uh, just like that and then I can press command T to get this little uh, window pop up and then I can actually move it up closer to the text just by no, not that one it is this one just by clicking and dragging on the icon and then um, I can move the letters closer together as well just by uh, changing this, is it this? No, not this, it's this one. Uh, so I can just move the letters closer together, further apart, and uh, yeah, so whatever suits your fancy, whatever looks best for you. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much how you did make this tutorial, guys. It's really easy, it really looks really nice as well. And if you have any tutorial ideas, please be sure to leave a comment because I'm kind of short on tutorial ideas at the moment and I don't really want to miss up an upload, so yeah, just let me know if you have any ideas. And uh, yeah, so thank you guys for watching, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in my next video.